Hello everyone, it's the Rugby League Lunch Hour here at loverugbyleague.com Towers. I'm James Gordon, as you can see, I'm Billy No Mates this week. Drew is off on his jollies. Dave is, we need a crowd, we need to start a crowd funder for Dave because he's in demand, he's a man in demand and he's, uh, he's working elsewhere today. He's got lots of our league commentaries um, going on as well. So yeah, we need a, we need a bit of a crowd funder. He, we need to get a, a, some sort of sponsorship package together to get Dave in here more regularly um thanks to betfred as always for their continued support of not only this show but the website in general um what am i going to do in this rugby league lunch hour i'm hoping that plenty of you are going to leave some comments to give me something to talk to and also to give me someone to talk with um so please do leave your comments and add to the debate as we're going through this afternoon um, this will be lunch hour we're here every Thursday 12 till 1 um, to break up your week um, we talk about the news of the week we look at the games coming up um, this weekend and so that's what we'll do I'll start with the news so you may see there's been a couple of um, big-ish news stories um, this morning Liam Watts has signed a contract extension at Castleford. He'll now be committed to the club until 2023, the end of 2023. A big pickup for Castleford, or a big statement from Castleford that Watts, of course, will be pushing for England selection. Although it didn't sound like Wayne Bennett was too convinced by uh, his credentials, shall we say, when um, Bennett was over recently for the Great Britain press conference. Um, Warrington have confirmed that Bryson Goodwin will be leaving the club at the end of the season, as has been speculated. Um, he is off to South Sydney Rabbit Souls. Um, Warrington actually linked with two witness centres, um, Anthony Gellin and Keenan Brand, have both expected to go to Warrington to basically replace. Um, sorry, I'm just getting the video up here to see the comments. Um, Keenan Brand and Gellin being rumoured. Um, interested Warrington to go back to replace to fill the void I should say left by Bryson Goodwin um, a few other bits from early this week Kenny Edwards is Huddersfield the confident of signing Kenny Edwards from Catalan this deal's been brewing for a few weeks but Huddersfield coach Sam Wolford has gone on record to say that he's very confident that they'll put a deal together for him for next season he, he has tried to sign Edwards twice before. Um, Thomas Mins is out for the season. He was uh, he's just on his way back from a two year drugs ban. Of course, he was handed a, a deal by former club Hull KR in May until the end of the season. Um, he has been in training. He wasn't his ban didn't doesn't expire till July fourteenth. But he's broken foot uh, in a training ground incident. So he's out for the rest of the season. He'll be hoping um, he's done enough to get a deal. For 2020, uh, Swinton announced a good few renewals last night. The headline one was Gavin Benyon, who did sign for Salford at one point, but then returned to the championship first with Rochdale and then with Swinton. A uh, big coup for Swinton to have him on board until the end of 2020. Frankie Holton is another player that Swinton have signed up until the end of next season. He um, made the step up from the community game actually with Lee East uh, to join Swinton earlier this year and is impressed enough to get a deal and Sammy Kabula the Wigan, fro uh, the Wigan prop who is currently at Swinton on loan has had his loan deal extended by a month um, looking back earlier in the week uh, uh, a bit of a weird one involving Leeds Leeds have got have brought in Ryan Carr as assistant coach Ryan Carr is the head coach at Featherston um, an interesting one this Featherston used their 20th loan or dual reds player last weekend in the shape of Will Dagger from Hull KR and um, you could say that Featherston and Leeds is probably how whoever came up with the dual reg um, system, they that's how they thought it was. It very much feels like Featherston is a partner club to Leeds and a, almost like a feeder club to Leeds in some ways. Um, a bit of a shame because you feel like Featherston has got a little bit of potential with the way they, they operate their club. But um, interesting one to see Ryan Cargo there. Maybe he sees some long-term legs in going. Um, to lead, I'm not sure. Uh, Featherston, of course, right up there in the top five of the championship and could um, be promoted to Super League in theory. Let's say let's not write anybody off at this stage. Um, Casford have been busy as in the transfer market as well. So as well as Liam Watts signing the extension, they have signed three new players for next season: Cronulla winger Sasai Fecky, uh, Daryl Olfert, and George Griffin, both from Salford, have signed up for next season. Um, Casford busy at all fields this week. They need to strengthen a little bit. They've been a bit disappointed with their season so far, but recruiting well already. 
St. Helens have issued a statement saying that they will ban fans who they find have uh, were guilty of letting off flares at the game against Warrington last week. And yeah, not really much more to say. That's the second crowd related incident news story this week because Featherston have been fined um, after a second incident of crowd problems in their recent match against Bradford. Um, that means there'll be segregation in place uh, for Featherston's game against Lee this weekend. Um, Featherston always a bit of a. There's always, I mean, I think all clubs have got fans that are a little bit unsavoury, um, shall we say? Um, a shame for Featherston. Um, maybe they got a loan from Leeds to pay that fine. Who knows? Uh, in the NRL, George Burgess has been handed a nine-match ban for an eye gouge last week. If you saw that on the uh, on Sky last week or on Watch NRL, or have you watched the NRL? Um, a bit of an ugly one from George Burgess. Second time as well that he's been cited for it so he'll basically miss the rest of the season i think he can come back for the playoffs um but yeah not a good look for the england international and he is out of contract as well at the end of the season so um interesting to see where he goes and and who picks him up um just a few more man of steel voting still leading uh, blake austin still leading jackson hastings and i can see uh, rob speakman's left comment about jackson hastings we'll move on to him in a moment um, Jackson Hastings isn't closing the gap on Blake Austin. There's just two more weeks um, where the Man of Steel votes will be publicised. After round 22, the votes will go dark and you won't know who um, is picking up the points from the panel um, until the Man of Steel is announced at the awards dinner on October the 6th. Um, a few bans, or sorry, one ban I should say, coming out of the Warrington Saints game last week. Chris Hill, too much ban. Um, for a tackle on Mark Percival. There was a bit of a debate over um, Sitalaki Akuola's challenge. Well, not challenge as such, but the incident involving him and Aaron Smith, which effectively re which resulted in Smith being stretched off um, and subsequently isn't playing this weekend either. Um, Justin Holbrook criticised Akuola's um, carrying technique. Steve Price criticised Aaron Smith's tackling technique. Um, the disciplinary panel decided there was no case to answer for Aquola, and I think that's fair, fair enough. Um, obviously, nobody likes to see anyone get injured, but um, I don't think there's a great deal wrong with the carry. And then a final news bit before we start. I start looking through some of the comments. Uh, Wakefield have released Craig Hooby, but handed new deals to Jordan Crowley and Tira Arona. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and look at the fixtures and the tables. Let's just have a look at a couple of comments that have come in and, and please do leave your comments. Please do help me out because I'm on my own today. Rob Speakman, thoughts on Jackson Hastings? Thinks he could be a perfect partnership with Jared Sammer at Wigan. Of course, our resident Wiganer, Drew Derbyshire, is on holiday. Um, be interesting to get his thoughts when he's back next week. But um, Hastings and Sammer is an interesting one. I mean, Sammer's not been a regular, has he, um, at Wigan? But... Um, Obviously, George Williams expected to be off at the end of the season, so someone's going to have to nail down that number six and number seven jersey. Of course, Lula is still there, and you've got Sam Powell, who's capable as well. Um, be interesting to see whether Josh Woods gets is considered at all. Of course, he's on on all at Lee this season. Whether he gets considered for any of those spots, because I think he's got some potential. Um, Sam, it's very off the cuff. Are Sam and Hastings too similar, maybe? Uh, I'm not too sure, but yeah, certainly interesting to see what happens there. Of course, Hastings, a lot of speculation over his future um, this season. He'll be focused on Salford. Our understanding is that Hastings is quite keen to um, not announce anything until the end of the season or much nearer to the end of the season because he is focused on getting in the top five with Salford. Um, Alan Greenfield has commented saying great news on the Watts contract extension certainly I think Castleford they paid a fee to sign Watts from Hull last season and he certainly proved worth that outlay um, uh, you know uh, although Castleford have been a bit in different form wise they're still fourth in the league um, and on their day you know you wouldn't fancy playing them especially against the pack that they've got if they get that full pack fit um you know, they're, they're, they're a test for, for anyone. Um, on that note then, let's please do put, put some comments in and leave your comments. I'll go ahead and look at this weekend's fixtures. I've got the list of fixtures from Super League and Championship and the league tables as well, which it's been really nice this season, it has to be said, to 
be looking ahead to weekends and looking at the table with with real interest. I think in previous years it's not necessarily been like that because we've had the split, we've had the bot we've had the top eight and the bottom four and ultimately we've almost ignored the top eight, you know, apart from the race to get in there. But then also the the whole thing at the bottom of the table, none of this excitement that's building at the moment would have happened last season because you know, Leeds and, and whoever else would have been in the bottom four and then they would have just coasted through the middle eights as we've seen Leeds, Warrington, a few other teams do in previous seasons. Um, real drama, it has to be said, at the bottom. We've now got four teams on 14 points. So that's Leeds, Huddersfield, Hullcow and London. Of course, Huddersfield have been sucked into that. It has been a, a, bot- it has been a three-way battle for a few weeks, but now Huddersfield find themselves dragged into that mess and um, they've got a huge game tonight away at Salford which is the Sky Sports game um, a win for Huddersfield there might even have Salford looking over the shoulder Salford currently sit on 18 points with Wakefield um, you would imagine that a win tonight for Salford would basically say right, we're not getting involved in that relegation battle um, but a win for Huddersfield could even drag a few others into into the the battle um Salford need a win in their own right really to to keep up with the top five they've slipped two points adrift now of the top five there's three teams on 20 points that's Casford Wigan and Catalan which is two points at Salford Salford's um main plus is their points difference so they've got a plus 71 points difference they are one of just five teams with a positive points difference um and theirs is better than Casford and Wigan's um I think I fancy Salford to win at home. I think even though they've got a little bit of uncertainty over players, I still think at home Salford are a a decent proposition. Um, Huddersfield will certainly... You know, it could be an edgy weekend for Huddersfield if they lose as well because there's some potential elsewhere for, you know, for maybe some... Well, I mean, mean, there's always potential. I suppose they're fortunate in the other three teams have got fairly tough games this weekend, but then... Every game is is tough. Um, so on Friday night, Casper Leeds, Hull, St Helens and Wigan, Hull, KR. Uh, a couple of games there implicated at the bottom. Leeds will be looking to build upon their win over Catalan last week. But a trip to Casper always tough. Casper got a decent record over Leeds. And, and Casper themselves need to keep winning to maintain that top five spot. I think Casper will edge that one. Hull... Um, we'll be disappointed that they lost to Hull KR last week, but in typical Hull fashion, you you couldn't you could see them turning Saint Helens over. Saints now eight points clear at the top, closing in on the second successive league leader's shield. Um, a real interesting sort of subplot to the Hull Saint Helens match is Adam Swift, who is signing for Hull next season, has been drafted in to the Saint Helens squad um, in place of Aaron Smith, who we mentioned earlier. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think uh, Hull are capable of turning that over. But Saints, I've got a good record against Hull, so I'll go Saints there. Wigan, Hull, KR, these two met a few weeks ago at Craven Park and Wigan won with a Sam Powell drop goal. That has almost proved a catalyst in Wigan's recent resurgence. So Wigan are now up to fifth. Um, they're in the top five. So both, sorry, cast with Wigan and Catalan have all now won 10, lost 10. Um, I think Wigan will fancy that home advantage against Hull, KR, even without Sean O'Loughlin, who's injured for a month with an Achilles problem. Um, on Saturday, there's two games, London Broncos against Warrington and Catalan against Wakefield. London back to the bottom of the Super League after their defeat against Casford last week. I think they'll be slightly disappointed actually at the manner of that defeat to Casford because points difference could become crucial in this running. Uh, and London are now minus 197 um, is their points difference, which is, what's that, 41 worse than Hull KR, 90 worse than Huddersfield and 105 worse than Leeds. So London, if they are to lose matches, they need to make sure they stay in those matches for as long as possible and lose by as little as possible. Because you feel that if London are to stay up, it might come down to points difference. Um, Warrington have now lost six games this season. I know I was having a conversation with a Warrington fan this week, actually, where everyone's been talking about Saints and Warrington being a cut above everybody else. I don't actually think that's the case. I think St. Helens are a cut above everybody else. I think Warrington are probably better than everybody else, but there's not much between Warrington. And you can see that in the table now, Hull only four points behind. I think Saints are a cut above everyone else. Then you've got Warrington, who are slightly ahead of 
you know, the chasing part, which is Hull, your Hulls and your Wiggins and your Cashfords. Um, but I think Warrington, generally, they tend to bounce back from defeat, so I would expect them to bounce back in London, but a, a tough a tough one. And London, of course, had some picked up some really good results all this season. Um, so, yeah, an interesting one. The Catalan have been in dismal form um, of late. They actually have the third worst points difference in the league. They host Wakefield. Wakefield can actually go above Catalan in the table with a win here, and I think I wouldn't bet against that actually. Wakefield winning at Catalan. Um, a few more comments. Louis has uh, said, "What about Lou Lomax gouging himself? Should he get a ban? I'm not sure what he means. I'm not sure what you're talking about there, but um, a Warrington fan saying about Liam Watts. Yeah, you know, I think I think Liam Watts would probably get a deal." Probably getting most teams in Super League to be honest. Um, looking into the championship, of course, I like to cover everyone on here. So let's go down into championship. Some interesting games actually in the championship this weekend. The bottom six all play each other effectively. So you've got uh, Witness Rochdale, Swinton, Batley, Dewsbury, Barrow. So currently the bottom six is Batley and Swinton have twelve. Witness have ten. Dewsbury, Barrow have nine, and Rochdale. Have two Rochdale are pretty much dead and buried. Um, we still expect the championship to expand in number, so you know it might not be the bottom two go down. But as things stand, the bottom two go down. Currently, Barrow sit in second bottom. They travel to Dewsbury, who they are on equal points. Dewsbury have got a game in hand on everybody, which might prove useful for them. Um, Batley travel to Swinton. You feel the winner of that game probably would have then done enough. To get away from the relegation dogfight, um, that would put them on 14 points. You'd expect Widnes probably to beat Rochdale. Halifax are in danger of maybe getting sucked into it. They're on 16. I still think 16 will be far too many points to, to go down. But um, Halifax are in Toronto, which is a game that you cannot watch on Sky Sports due to um, some broadcasting issue with Toronto. Um, so yeah, so interesting. It's gonna be it, the bottom of that championship table could look very different um, come Sunday night. The other games this week. Um, again, please do leave your comments and your thoughts and your predictions as well for the weekend. Um, other championship games this week: Sheffield against York. So York, uh, Sheffield have actually slipped out of the top five now. They've been up there for most of the season. They are in sixth place, two points behind Featherstone in fifth, and four points behind York, who are fourth. York. I thought York would fall away, I must admit. Um, only got promoted last season, of course, as League One champions. They've been pulling pulling off some great results. They had a really late win against Dewsbury last week. But York is still up there, fourth in the table. Um, they'll be able to put a bit more breathing space between them and the chasing pack if they can beat Sheffield. But Sheffield, of course, at home, um, tough place to go. Um, Toronto Halifax already mentioned Toronto are 10 points clear at the top so they're closing what did they play 27 games so if they win this week 10 points possibly 12 points clear with 7 games left so Toronto going to end up with a championship league leader shield for the second successive season um, an interesting game in France actually Toulouse against Bradford Bradford they're two points behind, two points off the top five. They had a really good win against Witness last week, 62 0. Um, almost a test of Bradford's promotion credentials, maybe. Um, I still think Toulouse, Bradford, Lee, Featherstone, York, I still think they're capable of springing a surprise against Toronto in, those, in the playoffs. And, and you've got to feel that something like that could happen. Um, Toulouse, Bradford, Bradford. Obviously, they need to get in that top five, no doubt, um, and they need wins to do that. So, um, you know, they'll need a win this weekend. The good, th the good news for both Toulouse and Bradford is that Lee and Featherstone play each other this weekend. So Lee travelled to Featherstone, segregated, of course, as we mentioned. Um, Featherstone are currently on twenty four points, two points behind Toulouse. Lee and York are all on twenty six. Featherstone need to win to maintain their top five place because they've got Bradford. And Sheffield breathing on the next. I mean, Featherstone's points difference, unless they get absolutely slaughtered, even if they lose, they'll still be in the top five, um, even if Bradford and Sheffield both win. Um, Lee, though, actually, I still, we've, we've said it before, me and Drew uh, have said this before on the show, that we do think that Lee have got the potential to, to go all the way. Um, finishing second, actually, 
is a would be a big fillip for somebody so um they'll be looking at that as a game to win certainly as as you do with with every game as well toronto halifax on toronto still only lost once all season which was of course to toulouse in toulouse um please do leave some more comments if you've got anything to add or if you've got some predictions um thursday rugby league lunch hour i'm on my own this week um everyone's on holiday it's all right for some isn't it so um going back to some of the other other bits and bobs on the site as well um we did a dream 13 this week of players that have played for both hull fc and hull car i know some people have disagreed um with drew's selection but that's the nature of the beast um We've got I've got an expansionist blog coming out later this afternoon with uh, there's a big game in Scotland this weekend an under 16s domestic game which I believe is the first under 16s domestic rugby league game um, in Scotland ever. Um, there's been a few loan signs in the lower leagues as as well. Um, the gossip off the record gossip column is out. There's some news about it looks like Patrick Arvan is returning to witness. There's some news about the Wigan Post. Um, changing their print deadline which means they're not going to be able to cover uh, evening Wigan Warriors games in the paper and um, there's a few other transfer tidbits in there I'm trying to think of something I think Jess Litton is one of those going to look out Chris Green as well is interested in a few clubs and um, there's a few few murmurings a few rumours kicking around elsewhere as well Tony Gijo has rejected a deal at Catalan um, a really interesting piece as well uh, a few interesting pieces actually kicking around in the in the newspapers elsewhere John Wilkin has come out and said about concussion and he thinks that in a few years time we'll look back at how rugby league is played now in horror at the way that players what put players put themselves through and, and how they're treated um yeah i think that's in the it's in the telegraph it's in, it, i think it was on it was on the pay so it'll be in a few places if you want to read that one james graham has come out and said he'll donate his brain to science um when he dies um, so they could do some research into concussion and the impact of head injuries um and stuff like that so yeah and um, head injuries are always you know always up for debate and and always a little bit um always a little bit of a subjective thing because i think you know you've always with that with the the, the head in the head injury assessment is it open to abuse i think that's always the cynics amongst us would always um uh, think that but um Clearly, there's there's work that needs to be done um, to improve um, how that's how that's monitored and, and how that's um, discussed. A few more comments. So we'll get on to leave one shortly. But um, Josh Wilson says Ratu now logo for Great Britain, um, which is an interesting. I mean, a brilliant pickup. It has to be said from from Hull. Um, you know, they've picked him up. He's Fijian, isn't he? He was, he was playing rugby union. He was in the army or, or whatever it was, and um, you know he, he scored some really good tries for for Hull, especially that one at Catalan, which was a belter. Um, I've seen a few people say, "Oh, well, is his defence up to much?" But I, you know, in the games I've seen him, I, I thought his defence was was where it needs to be. Um, so, you know, I think we talked about this last week on on the show as well that. Hull have got some real options in their back line next season and um, it's very difficult to figure out who they're going to play. Of course, they've got Adam Swift coming in. Um, they've got Mahi Fanua returning. Um, I mean, we forgot to him about me last week as well. So we were talking about Josh Griffin, Jay Connor, uh, Britt Faraimo, um, you know, now Logo himself. You've got Swift coming in, you've got Fanua. Um, you know, two of our is there as well. So many options for Hull next season in that back line. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how they manage it. Um, the the League One games. Um, what have we got here? We've got London Scholars against Coventry on Saturday. So Scholars are still doing okay. Um, in the table. Um, they're up there and thereabouts. They'll be hopeful of of get consolidating that playoff spot and, and having a shot at promotion. I thought, to be honest, I did think at the start of the season that it was to do with um, the partnership with Toronto that they were doing well, but apparently not. Um, so fair play to them. Coventry um, doing things the right way, organically trying to grow the game um, down there as well. West Wales still looking for that win there at home to Doncaster. On Sunday, we've got North Wales, Workington, Hunslet against Newcastle and 
why him against Oldham. Um, in fact, let me get the league table on here because I've not got that written down. Um, Whitehaven slipped up recently, but they're still top of the league on 19. Oldham breathing down the next on 18. Newcastle on 17. Hunslet on 16. Uh, London scores on 15. Doncaster on 14 and massively tight at the top of League One. Um, Hunslet, of all those teams, have got a game in hand, so that could prove crucial for them. Um, working to the next in line on 12, then you've got North Wales on 10, Coventry on 6, Keithley on 1, of course, they had a points deduction at the start of the season, and West Wales have played 13, lost 13, but are competing at least a little better than they managed last season. Um, that's it, I think, for me for this week. Short and show, it's a rugby league lunch. It's a typical lunch hour for me, it has to be said, only half an hour. Um, usually sat at my desk eating. Uh, hopefully next week, Drew or Dave will be back with me. Thanks, as always, for your comments. Please do get on the site, loverugbyleague.com, for the latest. Um, and if you've got any suggestions or comments or predictions you want to leave, put them in the comments. We'll try and reply this afternoon. Um, and that's it for me for now. See you next week.